In top down, center out, we add extra fabric to our pattern pieces along the top and all along the side seams. We do this for two reasons. First, it gives us more to work with as we're fitting. Having more fabric in our seam allowances preserves our options and allows us to try more things as we are fitting this toile to our bodies. So we don't wanna be limited by not having enough fabric. Second, having more fabric in the seam allowances gives us something to hang on to as we're fitting and pulling and pinning and manipulating that toile. So just makes that process much easier. Importantly, we are adding fabric in such a way that preserves the original pattern architecture that we started with. We're not redrafting anything. We're not changing any of the design lines for this pattern. Let me walk you through the decisions that you'll make as you are adding extra fabric to your pattern pieces. Depending on your proportions and your height, you may be adding different amounts of fabric. Here I've got my nested multi-sized pattern pieces that I'll be using for the tracing. And I always like to trace my vertical seams first and work from the inside out. So for your crotch and inseam, top down center out says that we use our hip size to trace those lines. So whatever hip size you determined in the previous video in this series, that's the size that you'll trace for your crotch and inseam on both front and back pieces. So let's say for this example, we chose a size 12 for our hip size. That's shown here highlighted in blue. So I'll just go ahead and trace that. Next, we're going to trace our side seam. And this is where we'll be adding fabric evenly all along the side perimeter of our pattern pieces. So the question is, how much fabric do I add? And it depends. So we're going to use our waist size to determine how much fabric to add along that side seam. If your waist size is the same size or smaller than your hip size, then you're going to add a standard amount of fabric between half an inch and one inch evenly all along that side seam. You can decide how much you add, whether it's the half inch or the full inch. So in this example, if my waist circumference put, puts me at a size 12 or smaller, I'll be adding this standard amount to my side seam. I personally usually go with the full inch because it gives me a little extra room to play with, but again, up to you. I will say that this guidance assumes that you have a 5 8 seam allowance on your pattern. So if you have a smaller seam allowance than that, then you may wanna err on the side of adding that full inch or maybe even a little bit more. So to do this, I will lay a tape measure on my nested pattern pieces and I'll look for what size is one inch away from the size 12. In this case, for this pattern, it happens to be the size 16. So I'm gonna do, let the pattern do some of the work for me and I'm gonna trace the size 16 side seam. I'm just gonna use the same notches. I don't need to reposition those. Just trace the size 16 shown here in orange. The one thing that I will double check is that the hem notches are even. So I'll use the hem notch from the size 12 inseam on my size 16 side seam. I just wanna make sure that my hems will be straight. Now, one more thing to note here is if you're using a pattern that has a slant pocket or a scooped pocket in the front, like I'm showing you with the arrow here, then your front pattern piece on the right in this diagram uh, we'll have a chunk taken out of the top part of it. So if you're, if you're tracing a pattern like that, then what you want to do is use the pocket bag piece to just fill in that top corner when you're tracing. We don't want pockets in our toile. That just complicates the fitting process. So remove the pocket from your toile and just fill in that top part of your front pattern piece. If your waist size is larger than your hip size, then you're going to need to add enough fabric to the side seam to wrap around your body. So in that case, you'll use a custom amount of fabric uh, and add that to your side seam to make up the difference between what the pattern was drafted for and your waist circumference. So let me take away this pattern for a second and I'll show you this size chart. So we set our hip size as a size 12, and we're looking for what waist circumference is, was a size 12 designed for. In this case, it's a 29 inch waist. So let's say my waist circumference is about 35 inches. 
That measurement can fluctuate throughout the day, so you don't need to be totally exact, but let's say around 35 inches. So I subtract 29 from 35 to determine that the difference is six inches. Now this is the total circumference difference. I wanna know how much to add to each side seam. And there are four side seams, so I divide six by four and I get one and a half inches. So in this example, I would add one and a half inches to my side seams. So same as before, I go back to the pattern and I'm gonna find the size line that is one and a half inches away from the size 12. In this case, for this pattern, it happens to be the size 20, shown here in orange. Now, if you're off the nested size range at any point, that's okay. Just draw a line that is parallel to the starting size, in this case, the 12, uh, and that's however much distance away and then transfer the notches. Again, fill in the pocket on the front uh, pattern piece if you need to. One final note about this calculation is that uh, the minimum we should add here is half an inch to the side seam. So if you do this calculation and you come up with less than half an inch, just round up to half an inch. Okay, so next we're gonna move on and trace the shaping elements. So the darts or the pleats, transfer those, shown here in pink. And then we're going to add fabric to the top. So the way I do this is I will take a ruler and extend the center front and center back lines. I don't wanna change the angle at all. I just wanna draw a line straight up. So I'm showing you that here with the arrow. The minimum amount of fabric you wanna to add to the top of your pattern is two inches. If you are over five six, or if you are size 16 and above, add an extra inch for either of those two conditions. So you may be adding up to four inches to the top of your pattern. Now, next you wanna do the same thing for the side seams, just extend that line straight up and then connect the lines at the top. I will also uh, extend my dart legs or my pleat lines so that they come up all the way to the new top of my pattern pieces. The last step is to add a wedge of fabric to the top outer corner of your pattern pieces. To do this, I find the grain line of my pattern pieces. I take a ruler, align that ruler so that it's parallel to the grain line, and then I draw a line starting from the widest point of the hip. I draw it straight up. And I'm showing you that here with an arrow. Then I will just connect that line with the top edge of my pattern piece, and that's the wedge. So you may be thinking, I don't need to add extra fabric here. I just did a calculation to know exactly how much fabric to add to my side seams. Or you may be thinking what I thought for the first time, which is my waist size is smaller than my hip size. I don't need extra fabric here. But the reason why we add extra fabric at the top corner is actually two reasons. The first is that it gives you just a little bit extra to work with so that we can make sure that we can customize this design to the contours of our body. More fabric is always a good thing in top down center out when we're fitting. The second reason is that it keeps this area of the fabric on grain and keeps it stable. We're going to be pinning and pulling and manipulating this part of the toile a lot as we're fitting. And if it's cut on a slight bias, then it's likely to warp and become a little bit misshapen. And that can affect the accuracy of the adjustments we're transferring back to the original pattern pieces when we're done fitting. So we keep this area of the toile on grain so that we have the most stable fabric to work with. So once you've transferred your wedge, then we're all done, that's it. I will clean up this tracing here and show you the new outer perimeter in black, and I will trace this perimeter. I will typically also mark the original outline of the pattern piece on my tracing paper. So in this case, I would also trace the original line for the size 12, and that'll just help me as I'm assembling my toile. You may have noticed that the concept of grading between sizes is handled differently in top down center out compared to conventional fitting methods. In those conventional methods, I'm used to grading between sizes along a vertical axis. So I choose one size for my waist, I cross multiple size lines to get to a different size for my hip, and then I may cross more size lines through the leg down to the hem. In top down center out, 
we grade on a horizontal axis. So I choose one size for my crotch or inseam and another size for my side seam. In this way, we can think about a nested multi-size pattern as a menu of options that we can choose from for our unique proportions. Importantly though, we're not redrafting anything. We're just choosing the lines that work for our bodies. We can refine the fit of those lines once we have the toile on our bodies and we can see how the fabric relates to our anatomy. Next time, I'll go over how to assemble and sew the toile accurately. So join me then. Thanks for watching and happy sewing.